this video, we're going to prove an identity about hyperbolic sine. This identity here. The actual structure of the proof is given to you by the question. It says that starting from the assumption that x is greater than 0, conclude this statement here holds. So the proof is a story. The start of the story is that x is greater than 0. The end of the story is that the natural log of hyperbolic sine is less than x minus natural log 2. Like a good murder mystery novelist, we're going to write this story starting at the end and then work backwards to the statement x is greater than 0. So, I begin by writing the natural log of hyperbolic sine is less than x minus natural log of 2. This is a nice thing to work with. There's lots of simplifications you can make from this statement. The first of which is I'll bring the natural log over here and push them together with the log laws to say that the natural log of twice hyperbolic sine is less than x. And now I can use the definition of hyperbolic sine to say that this is the same as natural log of e to the x minus e to the negative x is less than x. Excellent. Now I can take exponentials of both sides and say that e to the x minus e to the negative x is less than e to the x. And now something interesting has happened. This quantity here may or may not be positive. And in order to take the log of this, I need it to be positive. So we need some kind of restriction on the x's to make this positive. And that's where the start of our story is going to start becoming useful. I want this to be positive, so I'm going to ensure that by writing it in. And now I could add e to, e to the negative x to both sides. So I can say e to the negative x is less than e to the x, which is less than e to the x plus e to the negative x. Ah, now I've got something that follows easily from x is greater than zero. I can see from my diagram that e to the negative x is always less than e to the x. So I've got this inequality here from the diagram. This one here I might need to work a little bit harder for, but it follows fairly straightforwardly. So for x greater than zero, excellent. I've be now I've got all the structure of my proof. I've got the start and I've got the end. I've only got a little bit left to fill in. For x greater than zero, I know that e to the negative x is going to be less than e to the x. And I also know that e to the negative x is greater than zero. So, combining this statement and this statement leads me here, and everything else follows nicely. So I've constructed this lovely proof. It's got the right start, it's got the right end, and everything in between follows logically.